Okay, so um, in this example, I just wanted to introduce the, um, some explainable machine learning methods inside of Python. Um, specifically, we're going to look at the interpret library, um, which has implementations for tools to um, try to explain a kind of black box model, um, such as a random forest or a support vector machine or something, or applying uh, more explainable, um, interpretable machine learning methods. Um, what we're going to specifically look at is using the explainable boosting machine or EBM method, which was uh, recently developed by Microsoft. It's based on top of generalized additive models, um, and it's integrated into this interpret library. Okay, so um, we're going to first off just again read in what we need. So NumPy, pandas, um, from the interpret library and specifically from the glass box module, we're going to pull in the model we want to work with, which is the explainable boosting classifier. Also from interpret, we're going to import show. That allows us to look at some of the results interactively. And then from scikit-learn, we're going to pull in a couple uh, tools for... Um, for uh, you know, for calculating metrics, and then also for splitting the data in the tra uh, training and test set. So, um, this train test split is coming from the model selection module, and then the, all these are coming from the metrics module. And then matplotlib, make sure we can plot it within the notebook, and then also importing Seaborn here um, as another you know library for plotting. Cool. Okay, so we're going to work with this uh, fairly famous data set um, uh, known as the Titanic data set. So um, I'm, if this is in a CSV file, so I'm just reading it in with pandas, and that's going to be a pandas data frame. And let's just have a look at the data. So here's what the data looks like. So we basically have whether the person survived or didn't survive, the, um, the, the class they were in on the ship, um, uh, the person's name, whether they were male or female, the person's age, um, the number of siblings or spouses aboard, um, whether or not they had parents or children aboard, and then how much was paid for the fare. So the idea is that we want to be able to predict whether a person survived or did not survive the, the, the sinking of this Titanic based on some of these characteristics. Okay, so that's that. Um, Again, it's really good to just explore your data ahead of time just to make sure that you know, it read in the way you think. There's nothing odd going on. Um, okay, so um, I'm just going to print the data types first here. So survived read in as, a, as an integer. P class read in as an integer. Once they say object, those basically work out as strings or characters. So, and then ages float um, there. So one thing that's a bit of an issue um, initially is that survived is zero or one, but really we don't want those to be treated like zero and one. We wanted that to be treated like a category. So I need to convert that into a string basically. And then the, the class we can also treat as a category. It's kind of like an ordinal variable in a way, but we're just gonna treat it as a category. So that's what I'm doing this next block here. I, in place, convert the survived variable into a string and then the p-class variable into a string. And then also, um, <coughs> pardon me, um, the, uh, the, uh, a couple of these variable names are long. So we have siblings slash spouses aboard and parents slash children aboard. That's just... Um, you know, long and that's going to be weird to have in code so I just I'm using the rename uh, method to and the dictionary here to change these long names to something shorter um, and I'm doing it in place and the axis is the columns right as opposed to the rows so that's just some data cleaning so now if we call um, the data type here you can see now these are reading as objects basically they're they're being treated as categories so category 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 um, the sex is um, also category, and then siblings is a count, so that's a number. Parents is a count, that's a number, and then um, the fair is a number too. So the data types now make sense. <coughs> the next thing I do is I use this is null method um, to remove any of the records that have missing data. So just in case there are some missing data, we don't want to include that. We just want to use the complete records. 
Oh, actually, sorry. This actually just the test is. Sorry about that. So basically, it, it determines whether there are any values in the table that are null. And we got back false, so that means that all the records are complete, so we're fine. So this is just testing for an incomplete data. And then I also kind of wanted to get a sense of how many records were in each. So how, so how many, what's the proportion of survived versus not survived? So here I'm basically just grouping it by the, that category or that categorical variable and then getting back the size and or that's basically the count. So looks like there, the zero was 545. I believe that's, um, sir, that's, did not survive. And then one, I believe, has survived. So the, cla the data are a bit imbalanced, but it's not terrible. So we're just not going to worry about data imbalance for this. Okay. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is split the data. So I am pull out the survived variable, which is our y variable. And again, since it's just one column, by default, it's going to want to turn it into a pandas, uh, pandas series. Um, so I use the two frame method here to convert the series into a pandas data frame. And then here I'm, I'm writing the predictor variables I want to use into a new, uh, a new data frame. So I'm going to use the class, the, the sex, the age, number siblings, and whatnot, and fair. I, basically I, I, I'm using all the variables except the passenger's name. Um, so that creates basically our X and Y sets. Now. The next issue is that we don't have separate training and test sets, and generally it's a good idea to um, you know have a holdout set to test the model on because of you know issues of overfitting and whatnot. So we're going to do that using the train test split function, which comes from Scikit-Learn. So basically, you give it the x variables, the y variables. You tell it the proportion that you want to withhold. You can set a random state, and that makes it reproducible, so you would get the same splits if you ran it again. And you can stratify. So effectively, what this means is we're going to withhold a, basically a third of the data uh, for testing. It means roughly two thirds of the data is going to be our 0.67 proportion. 0.67 of the data will be used to test, and then we stratify by survival. So it should be specifically. 0.33% uh, of the survivals were withheld and 0.33% of the not survived were withheld. And then just to, once we run that, um, we can print back the counts just to get a sense of how many we have in each group. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, note that this produces multiple objects, so that's why, so we get back the X, tra X train, X test, Y train, and Y test as separate variables there. Um, and there's our count. So to train the model, we have 365 examples of did not survive and 229 of did survive, and then 180 of um, not survived and 113 of survived withheld for testing. Okay, um, next thing I'm doing here, and this really isn't necess really necessary, but before I ran a model, I just wanted to kind of get a sense of what, if there looked like there were relationships between um, whether someone survived or not in some of these variables. So this is comparing survived and age, and this is creating a box plot using Seaborn. So that actually looks like the age distribution between the two are not um, that different. Maybe the, the, looks like maybe the median is slightly lower for did um, survived. Um, but that doesn't that would indicate that maybe that's not going to be a very strong predictor variable. Here's the the number of siblings. They don't look that different either. Now this one's a little bit different. This is the parents variable. So this is much more variability uh, for survived versus not survived. And this is the fair um, that and uh, let's see here. So that one looks like there's a bit more difference. So it seems like you are more likely to survive if you paid more for the fare, which kind of makes sense. Okay, and then to look at um, uh, like more uh, like the categorical variables, we're just using this cross tab method, so you can kind of see the correlation between. Um, so, so basically, this is giving us back the this is the not survived per class, and this is the survive per class. So, you know, we can see that the the Third class, um, a lot more people survive than say the, the the first class in terms of the distribution. 
or sorry, backwards, right? So uh, the lower class passengers, I don't like that term, but um, the people that were that paid for a lower class ticket will say that um, they seem more likely to not have survived. And then gender wise, um, that looks like there's a bit of a trend there. If you were female, you were more likely to survive. And if you were male, you were potentially more likely to not survive. Okay, so that's that. Um, now we're ready to train a model. So even though the, um, the interpret library is not scikit-learn, it was built so that it looks a lot like scikit-learn. It works well with scikit-learn functions. Um, so if you're used to scikit-learn, you can jump into this and use it pretty easily. Okay, so here I'm just initiating the explainable boosting classifier model, and then I fit it using the predictor variables and the and the and the dependent uh, survived to not survive variable. Okay, so once that runs, um, then we'll get back a model, and then we can look at the results. So this, uh, what's cool about explainable boosting machines is it creates a model that's really interpretable. Um, so if so, basically every variable is effectively just uh, mapped to a function, which is used to make the prediction. Uh, okay, there we go. That was just giving me some messages. Okay, <coughs> so it looks like in the in the results the gender or the sex of the passenger was actually the the best predictor variable in the model model followed by the the class that they were in on the boat right and then the siblings fair age were less and then the ones that have the x here these are where there's interactions between the variables and generally those are not super important so it seems like the interactions didn't really weren't super important all right so let's just look at some of these so if we look at uh, categorical variable of sex here you can see how this uh, the scores map to the the predictions and and the densities and whatnot if we look at a continuous variable so let's just look at age we can see how that maps so in short it's basically just this function um, so if you know the function the value or the um, if you know the value, you can get back the score, and then you basically have a bunch of scores for different variables that get combined to get back a final prediction. Um, when you have um, interactions, um, for example, let's just look at age and fair, then you get back these two-dimensional arrays that, that kind of show the interaction between the two variables. Okay, and then you can also get a prediction um, back for... Uh, for a uh, for a single variable. So here um, I'm using explain local. I'm just feeding it some data. So what this does is it shows you um, predictions for a single variable or or a, a single new sample. Um, so for example, this person was predicted the to have survived and they did survive so it was correct and this is the, like the likelihood so they suggest that basically there's like a 90 percent chance that they survived and that they did survive and then you can see how the different predictor variables contributed contributed to that so for example the person's sex which was female and their class both indicated that they were likely to have survived um and then their class and sex um Interaction also suggested that, whereas their age generally suggested that they maybe didn't survive. But if you sum up these, the, it was leaning towards likely survived. So it's really cool. You get basically uh, um, these global explanations explain the global model. So you get these functions for each, each variable. Um, that effectively are the model, and then also these interaction terms. And then you can even look at the results for individual predictions, which is pretty cool. Okay, and then lastly here, I'm just going to predict back to our withheld data. So e again, even though this is not, um, this is not um, scikit-learn, it basically looks the same, right? So to do the prediction is just the dot predict method, and you feed it the new data. And then I'm feeding it into the confusion matrix, from um, NumPy, and then I'm um, using this confusion matrix display function, which is, oh, sorry, I said, I said wrong. I'm using the confusion matrix function from, from scikit-learn, 
and then the confusion matrix display makes a nice display out of um, the confusion matrix. And again, that comes from scikit-learn, and then I just plot it. There we go. So this is the result. We see that 165 that that did not survive were correctly classified, and 70 that um, that uh, that survived were correctly classified. And the off diagonal here, those are your incorrects. And then if we look at the metrics, you can see it there. So it's like the 80% accurate. Um, Okay, cool. So anyway, um, you know, explainable machine learning is uh, kind of a major area of research now. I mean, a lot of people really just uh, are get worried with machine learning when you're making decisions on models that are difficult to interpret. So again, there this interpret library has tools to help you explain models that are not inherently interpretable. Um, we didn't talk about that, but if you're interested, you can go in and look at that. And it also provides um, access to some models that are designed to be uh, directly interpretable, like the explainable boosting machine. Um, so it's worth looking into. And again, if you have some background with scikit-learn, this works really, really similarly. So um, it should be something that's fairly easy to pick up, at least in terms of, of the code.